On Monday, September 15th, ChatGPT launched an upgrade to Codex. Codex, of course, is the engineering platform that ChatGPT has been building out, that OpenAI has been building out. In this case, the upgrade to Codex is really a new flavor of ChatGPT5 optimized specifically for coding. It fixes two things that have been really frustrating to most of us who are building with Codex, building with Claude Code, building with any AI tool. Namely, it is really, really, really hard to get them to stop and just fix one thing. Like surgical edits have been really tough and it has been difficult to get them to do long agentic tasks with a high degree of correctness. And that last phrase is important because if you use them, you know they do long agentic tasks very easily, but not always with a high degree of correctness. Now I've talked in the past about how you address this with prompting. I've talked about how you address this with data chunking. I've talked about how you address this with how you handle your code base and feed your code base as context and how you keep track in markdown files of the decisions you've made. There's all kinds of tricks that people are using. Those tricks are probably still helpful, but it sure does help if there is a base model that is actually better at those core tasks. And so if you ask yourself how or why does it suddenly work, I think the thing that you're going to find when you peel the onion and think about it is that they've improved the quality of the reasoner specifically around code execution tasks and understanding coding related prompts. That is the only way that you can get a model flavor that is simultaneously much, much more stingy with tokens when making a surgical edit and much, much more lax or uh, extensive with tokens when making a long agentic task. It must understand what you want better, which is a big deal when you think about it, because one of the things that's been really, really hard about ChatGPT 5 as a whole is that it feels sticky. It feels like it's in a rut. It feels like no matter what prompt you get, you get this hyperactive speedboat of a model that says, here's all the action items and this is what we're gonna do. And you have to really lean on the prompt heavily to get it to do anything else. And I've talked a ton about how to lean on the prompt. And I'm gonna have another video soon about doing it again. But in this case, this is a flag of something different that I don't want you to lose. In this situation, the model is getting better at understanding your prompt. The model is getting better at understanding your prompt without you having to prompt fancy. And that is a really big deal. Now, granted it's for code. Code is probably the easiest use case for prompting parsing because frankly, Engineers tend to be pretty specific. Engineers tend to be very concrete. Engineers tend to refer to real specific code actions. And so, yeah, getting it to be a little bit better at understanding that is probably easy mode if you're trying to get a model to get better at parsing and understanding prompting. But it's still a step. It's a big step for this model because ChatGPT5 as a whole has not made it easier for people to prompt. I know multiple people who have thrown up their hands and given up on working with advanced models, given up on prompting because ChatGPT5 has been such a difficult model to prompt. I, I get it, like it's not me, right? Like I love this stuff, but like I get why, it makes sense. It shouldn't be this hard. It shouldn't be this hard seems to be what the team was thinking about when they made this update. It should be easier. And yeah, it's got a little bit of a high score on Sweebench and this and that. The real takeaway here is that this team at OpenAI continues to ship really, really fast. Whatever you think about the whole brouhaha around the Reddit thread on Claude Code and how many Redditors are real over there saying they're moving to Codex, the momentum shift toward Codex is real. There has been a massive momentum swing toward Codex and that has shifted the strategic battleground. For a long time now, it has been a truism that OpenAI has the best general market position given their consumer base, and Claude has the best specialist position given their beachhead on code. That is changing. And now you see it changing even Claude's strategy because Claude is emphasizing more now, hey, we have these data connectors. Hey, we launched this amazing PDF creation and this amazing PowerPoint creation, this great Excel creation file. I made a video on that. It's really, really good. It's a different strategy. And to me, the fact that they chose to release that and not Claude code feels, feels a little bit desperate. If they had something to release, that would compete with where Codex is going and how fast Codex was shipping, they would, they would. Now, I say that on Monday, September 15th, as I am aware that Dario has a big speech coming up this week and there are rumors that 
Opus 4.5 is coming out. So we may be talking at the end of the week about the big move they made, and that is just how these games go, right? It's an arms race. It's back and forth. But regardless of what launches this week, you should be aware. You should be aware that the strategic landscape has shifted and that launches like this reinforce a quality of engineering effort that make the experience sticky. They make it sticky. If you have the choice between more power at your fingertips that's correct and more power at your fingertips that is incorrect or likely to lead to bad pull requests, you're choosing the quality every single time because it makes you do less rework. Every engineer, 10 out of 10 engineers will choose that. And they're right. And actually, that goes for other parts of work too. Part of what, ironically, made Claude's connectors release with Excel powerful is that it actually got more of Excel right than anything I'd seen previously from OpenAI. Similarly with PowerPoint, it was easier to make a good PowerPoint deck than it had ever been before. I even got good results out of the PDF. I haven't done the video on that, but I'm going to do the video on that. The point is this, you need to prioritize the models that give you quality work, and you need to expect that those model changes will be real, but rarer than you think. And this is sort of a fine grained point, but if you think about it, Claude Code has been the best overall coding ecosystem for over a year now. And only now are we starting to see a shift toward Codex. And because these shifts are sticky, because the changes that are being made reinforce quality, and because the team is shipping really fast versus Claude, I expect that that shift will be sticky. Now, am I at a point where I'm willing to declare that anything is a permanent advantage in AI? Absolutely not. You should always be thinking multi-model over the long term. But there's a difference between thinking about multi-model use cases when you're building production pipelines and thinking about positions in the ecosystem. And positions in the ecosystem are stickier. They're stickier. In this case, Codex is starting to shift and nudge Claude out of the coding position in the ecosystem. That's a very powerful spot to be in because of all the other things that code allows you to unlock and get leverage on. The fact that more code is going in as reinforcement learning to OpenAI is a non-trivial benefit that they are acquiring directly from another player in the ecosystem right now, directly from Claude. So I would expect that Codex will stick around. I'm going to be doing a much longer sort of video on Codex. This was just my intro. This is the breaking news update. If you step back, if you look at where we are in this exponential curve that we're all living through, I think one of the things that comes to mind for me is that we are bored by the hype and we have forgotten how tremendous some of this news is because we have gotten so used to all of these updates. Humans can get used to anything. We have gotten used to a tremendous stream of news over the last two and a half years. If Codex had dropped out of a blue sky in 2022, it would have been on the front pages of all kinds of newspapers, even though it was a coding thing because it's such an intelligent model. But it's just another Monday in September now. We've gotten used to it. I want to challenge you, especially as these models get better, as they get more agentic, as they are literally the graph, the graph is there, right? As they're able to do this much more for you if you prompt them well because they're more agentic, and that's exactly what Codex can do if you're an engineer, the rewards are going to be disproportionate if you do not get bored by the hype, if you stay focused, if you know what you want out of AI, and if you're able to take advantage of it and build the way you want to build. And not everybody builds with code. Some people build with words, some people build with math, et cetera. But you have to decide what you care about and you have to latch onto that stream and you have to follow it and you have to take it seriously and you have to upgrade your tool sets a lot. The learning curve is gonna be real because we're all going through this exponential curve together. Don't get fooled by everyone else saying it's just another Monday. It's not just another Monday. The news is going to keep coming. There will be more big releases even this week, but this was a big deal. And I hope you have fun building something with Codex. I hope someone who has built code before, I really hope that this whole promise of Codex being better, which they, they, they did quantitative analysis, right? It's not that they're just promising. They're actually looking at pull requests, et cetera. But I really hope that this actually bears out for all of us because it would be really nice to have an AI that does not have this obsession with refactoring the entire code base at the drop of a hat. It would be nice to have surgical edits. And so here's to surgical edits, here's to exponential change, here's to seeing through the hype and recognizing it's not hype to get bored by, it really is a big deal, it's not just another Monday. Have fun with Codex.